Hello guys, what's up? So this is me, Kurt Zeus, and for today we'll be discussing all about globalization, globality, and globalism. So this is just a continuation of our lesson on introduction to globalization. So lesson one pa lang tayo, no? So we have to define what is globalization, globality, and globalism. So we will be encountering these terms on the succeeding lesson. So basically, we must already know uh, the difference and the meaning behind these three terms. In order for us to understand this, these three terms, we have to look into the suffixes. So, nandiyan in definition, but it's best to understand when we look into the meaning of the suffixes. So, globalization, we have the suffix isation. So, it refers to the process, or rather, it refers to a process. When we talk about process, there's an outcome. So, looking dito sa definition, no? notion of an act, development, or creation. Upon creation, upon development, there would be a certain outcome. So basically, an outcome and a development process yan. Globality, from the suffix ity-et, it refers to the condition or quality of being. Or we could also include status. Then globalism, from the suffix ism, it refers to the state, belief, and doctrines. Kaya we have Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, diba yun yung mga religions. But it also refers to Marxism, Liberalism, diba idea. So state, belief, doctrines or your idea, ideology. Or to give you an example when it comes to suffixes, no? Uh, before going with this global plus the suffix. For instance, we have the term immune. Okay, immune basically means you are free or you are free from getting a certain disease. Hopefully, COVID, no? So we have immunization. So immunization is the process for a person to become immune. Paano nga ba yung immunization? Punta ka sa hospital, get an immunization paper then magkakaroon ng consent then later would now be the injection then after the injection you have to follow the process probably the doctor will now prescribe na dapat hindi ka muna kumain etc it depends i do not know the medical process but quote and quote medical process that is now immunization so my step by step process yan now another thing immune plus ity we now have immunity so, immunity is the condition wherein you are immune to a certain type of disease. So, tendency, immune ka sa COVID, immunity yan. Pero, hindi ka pa immune sa ibang sakit such as polio, typhoid, dengue. So, you're still ongoing in the process of immunization. Now, the third suffix, although wala namang word na immunism, but let us create an ideology about, about immunism and this is quite a hot topic when it comes to cons and pros of immunization of immunity or vaccinations for for to be exact diba? some people believe that vaccines now are hoax hoax hindi daw totoo and uh, nag-insert daw sila ng microchip no although those are conspiracy do you believe on that no diba? that is pure diba? so yun yung context no so you have that belief and we now created this belief called immunism so, it's your belief of whether or not you will be vaccinated. So, ganun, no? Although, walang term na immunism, no? Uh, I just provide those examples para gets natin yung difference na isation, ET, and ism, no? Or, to give you an example, humanity, di ba? So, humanization basically means it's the process of developing this ideology called humanism, di ba? Basically, towards human rights, etc., di ba? Then, we have humanity, the state of empathy towards humans, or we have humanism, which is now the ideology. Now, from my examples, immunization, then, then humanization, or hum humanity, humanity. Now, let's go dito sa main topic natin, no? Medyo lumalayo na ako. Now, to further understand, ganito, no? Okay. So, globalization is a process. There's a certain outcome. Did we achieve the outcome? Uh, that is arguable, no? That is still debatable. Kasi globalization is an unending process. It continues. So, although we now experience the current product, quote-unquote product guys, ha, kasi yung product na yan is part of the social process. So, looking dito sa globality, no? So, it's a condition. Nakikita nyo bakit may, may hati-hati yung aking line dito sa una? Kasi yan, that would now refer to the condition or to the state of globality. Then, dito sa baba would now be your ideology. Now, to give an example would now be in terms of economic production. Uh, what do we mean about economic production? Yung klase ng paano nila gene-generate yung ekonomiya nila dati. Noong unang panahon, 
yung unang state of globality would now be in terms of hunting and gathering. So people will just hunt animals then what they when they travel kung ano nakita nilang food yun ay makukuha nila so that is basically one state of globality then nag improve yan then another state of globality or condition would now become agriculture now from agriculture naging feudal system siya so game of thrones if you imagine yung societies ng game of thrones that is feudalism then from feudalism naging industrialization the invention of machines that would now aid us when it comes to economic production then we have your age of informational te- uh, information technology so yung mga sinasabi ko kanina na agriculture feudal industrialization those are considered to be globality so my state my condition and that would now refer as to the process of globalization now ano itong globalism as time goes by humans will now develop ideas that would now assist yung state natin in order to progress so ideas natin would now be in terms of education because of education we now innovate technology so yan ang nangyari dyan kung wala yung globalism hindi uusad yung per state hindi natin makakamit itong current status natin or yung product na gusto natin ma-attain which is now globalization so medyo I hope na gets natin no? so yan yung globality and globalism now there's another thing for for us to understand these three terminologies by looking again to another deeper or deep terminologies called transplanetary relations and supraterritoriality relations now ganito lang yan guys no so included sa notes however i hope this is this is a simple uh, explanation no so from this diagram we have now your social connections now please take note humans by nature are considered to be social animals we interact we exchange we communicate with our fellow individuals so we are social animals so we connect now yung social connections na yan could now be determined through space ano ibig sabihin ng space dalawang variable yan time and place how do you communicate with another person you go to the place of another person then there's a certain time kung paano ka pupunta dun sa place na yun now during your early ages early human civilizations ang consider natin na type ng relation is transplanetary that's supposed to be trans may s transplanetary ano ibig sabihin yan time and place is relevant now as time progress through technology and globalism we now achieve supraterritoriality that sometimes time and place nagiging irrelevant na yan ano yung ibig kong sabihin nito no but before going to an example yan transplanetary is basically globality so for status or conditions of globality we now achieve our current state which is now globalization now to give you an example when we talk about social connections or relations Okay, communication. So, when we talk about communication, nung unong panahon, napaka-relevant ang time and place if you want to communicate, connect with another person. So, kunyari yung nanay mo nasa kabilang bundok at ikaw nasa bundok. Kunyari, Mount Pulag, tapos ikaw nasa atok. So, in order to communicate, you have to travel. So, place and time. Travel ka ilang days upang ma-communicate mo lang yung nanay mo. So, time and space is relevant. Are relevant, by the way. Time and space is relevant. Are relevant. Hindi ako English teacher, no? Okay. Time and space is relevant, no? So, may essence ng time yan. Now, as time goes by, technology, globalism, our ideas innovate and will now assist or aid the progress of our society, nagiging supra-territoriality niyan at nagiging globalization. And please take note dito, one variable, nagiging irrelevant na yung time and place. You want to communicate with your mother, kahit malayo na kayo, you could now communicate through Facebook, for instance, or Messenger, di ba? Or ano pa bang Messenger apps natin? WeChat, di ba? So, nagiging dyan is kahit nasa pulag ka, kahit nasa atok ka, kahit malayo kayo sa isa't isa, nagiging irrelevant na yung place and even time because accessible na yung gadget sa atin eh we could now communicate with our mother with just one click 
So ganun yung difference between transplanetary and supraterritoriality. And that could now assist in our understanding towards the development of globality, globalization, and how globalism will now assist towards this process. Or another example, uh, bigla na lang nagpop up sa utak ko, no? uh, events, diba? delivery, food panda, grab, diba? Nung una, if you want to order food, you have to go to the restaurant. So, may time variable yan. So, babiyahe ka pa ng jeep. Or kung wala pa yung jeep dati, kasi sinang unang panahon, maglalakad ka pa sa restaurant. So, may context to dyan ng time and place. Naging relevant pa siya dati. But right now, due to globalization, technology, ang nangyayari dyan is that through a click, automatically, pupunta na yung order natin. Diba? Even Lazada. And sooner and later, baka maka-imbento nga sila ng, ng warp zone ba yung tawag? Warp zone, di ba? That, that bigla na lang pupunta dyan. That time, wala na talaga. Nagiging irrelevant na siya. From reduction of time to the total removal of time when we want to get things, di ba? So, yan yung nagiging uh, one feature ngayon ng globalization. So, ganun, no? So, I hope na gets natin yung transplanetary supraterritoriality. And that would now aid to our understanding towards globalization, globality, and globalism. So thank you guys. So this is, by the way, from Skolt and Steger.